you'd like to code along with this demonstration, check out the GitHub link in the video description. If you head over there, you can download the initial starter files that you need. Also in the readme file will be um, setup instructions so you can get your project up and running and then code along with this demonstration. So what we're gonna do in this demonstration is kind of take a look at how we can use injection tokens to be able to code our services um, to an interface. So dependency injection has been around in Angular and then AngularJS before it um, since the beginning of time. And it's definitely a powerful technique and pattern to use in programming, especially when doing things like unit testing and stuff like that. Well, in languages like C Sharp and Java, um, when you do dependency injection, you typically will use something like an interface as your token, and then you'll inject a particular concrete class um, for that particular interface. And of course, that concrete class is coded to that interface. The problem though is, is that in, in Angular with TypeScript, is that uh, interfaces can't be used as injection tokens. And that's because interfaces don't actually get transpiled out to the JavaScript code that's gonna run in the real world. And so typically you'll find in most situations where uh, a class is used ultimately as the injection token. Well, the problem is if we're using a class as an injection token, it's kind of weird or awkward to then have alternate classes, but you still have to have the original class and that type of thing. Anyways, what we're gonna do in this example is kind of take a look at how we have two different services, console logger and HTTP logger. And we're gonna show how we can inject each of them um, individually directly running to the app component. And then we're gonna take a look at how we can actually do this through the use of an interface combined with an injection token. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So here in our app component TS, you can see I have an import statement for console logger and an import statement for HTTP logger. Let's just quickly run some code here and show how both of them actually work. So when I run the program, right now I'm injecting console logger, so this should output test to the console. So we'll say npm start. Give it a second here to uh, compile for us. Then we'll come over here and open this up in the web browser and open up our console. So right here, if you look up here, here's our little logging thing from our console logger. We also have the ability to do the same type of logging with the HTTP logger. So we actually have over here a dbjson file, which is gonna be used to power our JSON server, which is basically just a little REST service. It's very easy to use um, with a node application. So here's our, our current log entries. Um, we'll go ahead and add another one to this list by switching out the console logger here with the HTTP logger, just so you can see that both of these do in fact actually work. So we'll save, oops, we'll save that right there. Come back over here and we can reload and you can see we're outputting this object here to the console. And if you go over to the network tab, you can actually see where we actually made a log request right there. And then if we head back over to our dbjson file, you'll see we actually had two logging things occur because the page actually loaded twice. So with our editing and the server automatically doing the live reload. So there's our, our logging to the server. So wouldn't it be nice though, if we could actually switch between these two loggers without having to modify app component. So the idea would be that instead of having to put a concrete class here, it would be nice if we had the ability to code both services to an interface, such as iLogger. The problem though is this is not really going to work when we go to run this. Um, first of all, we need to make sure that our services are both coded to that interface. So we'll say implements iLogger. And then we'll also do the same thing over here for console logger. There we go. But you're gonna see even though we've done this, it's still not going to work because it doesn't really know what iLogger is. So let's say we actually came in and tried to do some type of provider configuration. So you don't see a lot of this anymore because of what changed in Angular 6 and setting up your services on the service themselves. But let's say we actually did come in here and actually set up a provider configuration. And then we came in and said, okay, I wanna take console logger here 
and I want to do a provide iLogger and then I want to do a use class um, not that console logger so let's say we wanted to try to do something like that right there well you come into here iLogger only refers to a type but is being used as, as a value and that's because this provide is basically going to be a token that will be used to inject an instance here of console logger and you can't do that you can't do that with an interface unfortunately now you can in other languages but in the case of TypeScript because of how it's transpiled to JavaScript can't use an interface there so the question is how can I still code this according to an interface yet still do the configuration for this you know not as part of the actual constructor to do that we're gonna first get rid of our providers section here I'm also gonna comment out console logger there we go and what we're gonna do is head over to our logger TS file where we have this iLogger interface configured and now we're gonna create something new we're gonna create a logger token which is just gonna be an injection token export const logger token equal to new injection token this will be of type iLogger and we'll just give it a string description of logger now the first argument is the description the second argument is going to be the service configuration so we'll say provided in root this will look familiar to your um, at injectable configurations that you do for services in general but this time we're going to use the factory approach and uh, we're going to actually do a open close parens new console logger there we go so now this will actually create an instance of the console logger and that will be what actually gets injected um, for this particular logger token so now what we can do is we can actually take this logger token head back over to our app component and I'm gonna bring in the logger token and down here as part of my definition I'm gonna use the inject decorator from core and I'm gonna pass in my logger token so I can still code this to an interface for the purposes of strong typing but this logger token which we set up over here will be configuring which service is actually going to be instantiated and passed in through the factory um, pattern here and I'm not having to specify console logger or HTTP logger here directly inside of my app component so now let's head back over to our web page reload and you can see it's now using console logger well we can do the same thing for setting this up with our um, HTTP logger as well so we'll come back over here to logger so the first thing we're going to do is actually say HTTP logger we're also going to need to pass in the dependency here in our loggers HTTP logger service it needs the HTTP client as a dependency so we'll just grab this right here copy that and come back over here to logger and we'll paste that in up there and to inject that we're actually going to use the inject function provided by the core so we'll grab inject we'll just pop on down here and say inject HTTP client there you go you can see our posting to our rest service occurred down here and uh, we'll just come back over to our web page here and reload there's our logging message there's our network request there it looks like we're good to go come over to our dbjson and you can see we've made lots of postings here to the actual rest service so you can see by using this injection token I can control which service is being um, actually passed into my app component without actually having to reference either of the services inside of the app component and you can actually make this determination between which one you want to pass in here at runtime so this is an actual factory function so there's no reason not you couldn't have additional logic for example that would choose between the console logger or choose between the HTTP logger just another way in which angular tries to be as flexible as possible while still giving you a great framework to organize and structure an application with